Hey, what's going on, everybody? Steven here from Wit Digital with Davis, our awesome marketing manager, hanging out yeah. today. And today we got a little bit of time with our buddy Brian Hammonds. And for those of you that don't know Brian, uh, Brian started in '99 basically as a plumber. Um, did that for quite a while and then started the plumbing hacks group and since then has started a couple other things, but that was in like 2012. And then over the course of the last five ish years has started to also move into a little bit more of this like advisory role, um, somewhat of a coaching role. And we might even talk about like coaches and definitions of coaches in this industry because it's become this big thing right now. And I think there's a huge need for the, the good ones. And then there's also a lot of people doing it for reasons that uh, are not really for the right reasons. But I do firmly believe that Brian and his team and everything he's doing is he's doing this for the right reason. And so uh, I know, you know, I've known Brian now for a couple of years, but I've seen him massively impact a lot of people's lives. And that's why I wanted to bring him on today, have a little bit of a chat, see what's going on in the industry, see what's up with him and do my best to pull a little bit of uh, really good knowledge out of him today. So Brian, welcome. Thanks for having me, Stephen. We really appreciate being here. Yeah, awesome, man. So let's uh, let's get right into this. Uh, so you were a plumber for a long time. I know you still you still own a plumbing company. And in 2012, you started uh, the Plumbing Hacks Group, which is by far one of the biggest groups. I know you mentioned it might not be the biggest, but it is one of the most impactful um, in the industry right now. Why why did you start that? Like, what was going on in your in your head? around that time? Yeah, so 2012, uh, I was actually, it's kind of started as a joke. 2012, I was at a, a, a real good friend of mine's house who's a, uh, who's a PE or an engineer, and uh, he was trying to sell his house at Home Inspector and found a whole bunch of things that were wrong. Uh, so I go in and I was like, hey, let me see the list. And he showed me some pictures. It was an atrocity. He had electrical tape wrapped around P-traps, like all kinds of funny stuff. And I'm like, dude, you're an engineer. Did you really think this was gonna pass? And he's like, well, you know, I was just trying to sell my house. It is what it is. So I took a couple pictures and I put them on my personal Facebook. And I had like 90 comments in about 30 minutes on it. Like people were just laughing about it and joking about it. And then Facebook started the group thing. So, you know, I was inundating my personal Facebook with all this plumbing stuff. And my family's like, I don't understand. So I'm like, you know, hey, there's group things here. Let's jump in and let's start a Facebook group. So we were actually the first plumbing related Facebook group. Um, and we jumped in and said, hey, let's start, you know, posting. So we named it Plumbing Hacks first. And um, a lot of people are posting funny stuff and memes and all that other crazy stuff. And it just kind of evolved into, you know, we had about two or 3,000 members. And I'm like, man, we really got a little bit of a following here. So we started talking business. And we noticed when we started talking about business and how to do things, the group just really started growing. So with the 5,000, it went to 10,000. And it grew exponentially quickly. Then we realized, hey, we need to keep this strictly professional. So we named it Plumbing Hacks and Plumbing Professional Discussions. We kicked out everybody that was a homeowner, and we went strictly to plumbing professionals. And ever since then, I think we're a little over 36,000 now. So it's, it's, it's grown exponentially. Um, but we really put a focus on the professionalism of our industry. Um, as you know, being plumbers, we have kind of a bad rap. Uh, a lot of plumbers have a bad rap of, oh, you know, you're a butt crack plumber plumber or you know the only three things you need to know on to be a plumber is hot on left colds on right and paydays on friday and as we all know you guys do a lot with the plumbing industry that's not what it's about like it's a very very technical industry yeah yeah i mean i know when when i first got into it and we had our first uh, plumbing client our first a couple of plumbing clients i didn't know near as much about what all went into it right like now i was uh, I, I was definitely naive and I always thought like, well, you know, it can't be that hard, but I also was aware enough because I had owned a couple of different businesses at the time. I was like, there's a lot that I don't know. So I'm not going to make any sort of judgments anywhere. And then as we got deeper and deeper into it, I was like, okay, like now I fully see, I, I took on a whole new understanding of the word skilled trade, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, wow, this is something that takes a years and years to know and master and you walk into every house and every house is different. Like in, in, when I quickly learned that I had a whole new respect for the industry. And that's actually why we went so deep into this industry is because um, I just saw a need for people that were really, really good people, really smart people. And quite frankly, just kept getting screwed over by other marketing agencies. And so right. we saw, we saw a need for it and that's why we did it. 
and never looked back since. I, I love the industry. Um, it's just, it's awesome. And, and that's, a, you touched on it right there. You know, there's so many people out there that like, that don't understand or respect the industry and they come in and, and, you know, there's marketing companies out there today. We get phone calls on the daily. Oh, Hey, you know, switch to our marketing company to this reason. And you're like, what are you going to offer me that's any different than the veterinarian down the street? We're two totally different industries. Like you really have to have knowledge and skills to be able to really market this thing correctly. Cause you know, everybody thinks just throw a couple keywords in there. And really it's more like, Hey, we're, we're a service company through and through. Uh, we have, we're 50, 50, as far as 50% commercial, uh, 50% residential. So we have a real mixed bag of, of clients. So, I need to have somebody that understands that. And, you know, you got to market to commercial different than you market to residential. And a lot of people yeah. that come at us with marketing plans are like, Hey, and we're just like, we can't have you because you don't understand our industry. So yeah. what's, um, what's been the most like fulfilling thing for you in the last, I don't know, call it five, eight years, like with everything you're doing, like what's been the most fulfilling thing for you? So I, being super humble, I, I feel like just being able to give a voice to the industry, um, you know, creating a platform that gives everybody in the industry a chance to talk about it, um, being able to help coach people in certain aspects of their business. Um, you know, I've, I've built and sold two very successful plumbing companies. Uh, I have a business partner, my third one, and I work for a pipe rehab company now full time. So I'm silent partners with one of my buddies trying to get his business to grow at the same time where I'm working a, a full-time job out of the plumbing industry. Cause you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm having fun doing it. Um, but really the coaching aspect and, and being able to help guys grow and just take their businesses to the next level. You know, we started out with, with my first company, it was me and a buddy of mine out of his mom's uh, one of the rooms in his mom's house. We had one truck and we were, we go in tag team calls. We jumped into 14 trucks in a matter of a year, you know, we just blew it up. And then we got to be a thorn in the side of a bigger company and they're like, we want you to go away. What's it going to cost? And we said, make us an offer. And they made us an offer. And both my business partner, I looked at him, we're like, where do we sign the paperwork? You can have it all. So, um, you know, just being able to impact people and really just help guys that are really starting out or, or that are struggling to get past a certain number of trucks. Um, it's, it's really a blessing and an, and, a, and an honor to be able to, to help people do that. And I think, you know, prospectively starting the hash group kind of opened that, open that realm for me to be able to do that. And I've probably helped, you know, 35 different guys go from being, you know, small guys to big guys. And a, a real big one that sticks out for me is a really good friend of mine, John, you know, him and his business partner had a falling out. He called me up on the phone. He's like, Hey, I need you in Ohio in a week. I'm like, done. I'll be there. We went door to door, got him a whole business started. Now he's got 45 trucks on the road and he's just absolutely killing it. So um, those are the success stories and the things that I like. And I'm super humble about it. I just love this industry and any way I can help is, is really what I want to do. That's <laughs> awesome, man. I love like, I think we, sometimes we can forget as business owners, what our primary objective is. Right. And we all know, and we hear like, oh yeah, you know, care about your, care about your team, care about your employees, like really focus on impacting their life. And I think most of the people, especially around you and I do that but it can be hard sometimes when maybe the business isn't going as perfect as we'd like it to be. And we start to get into like some number stuff and uh, we can fall into saying, okay, wait, hold on. This is more important. I got to put focus on it. But I know at least for me, I've always felt that in times like that, if I can take a step back and say, okay, wait a minute, if the numbers aren't matching up exactly right, I still need to go and focus on the people because that's the most fulfilling part. And it's the place where you can have the biggest impact. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's really where it's at. You know, I've learned a lot from watching guys like you and I mean, seeing how big you've grown in the last few years and, you know, seeing your live videos that you've done and how you've impacted your people in such a way that it's like, it's not a matter of, Hey, here's the job ta a task here. Here's how you do it. It's more or less the, Hey, how do we help you get to your maximum potential? And how do we help you get to where you want to be? And what makes you tick as a person? And I think that's a lot, a lot of people lack that. Um, understanding. And that's, what's great about having guys like you that do what you do, showing the live videos and talking about it all the time and just really putting it, putting it out there so that other people can say, Hey, this really works, you know, and, and you're, you're, a, you're a prime example of that. I mean, you, you post videos all the time about your culture, your people, like that's so cool, you know, and more people need to follow guys like you that are trying to get to that, get to that point in their, their careers. Cause it really makes a huge impact on your company. <laughs> 
you know, the thing that I, I appreciate. And I've, I've always just done it out of, it's fun for me, right? I, I'm fortunate that I saw it early, that it was fun for me to actually impact lives. And like you said, when I asked you, what was, what's the, like been one of the best things about everything you've been done is to impact other people's lives. And I think it's just important that we always remember that in business, especially when the business side of things isn't going as perfect as we would like it to. The best way right. to fix it is still focus on the people you know, make sure our guide rails are all in place on the business side, but focused on the people. Right. So, so Brian, you know, when you started the Facebook group, it sounds like that was kind of just a fun organic thing that came up. You know, it literally started with a hack that, you know, was a bad hack, but it was a hack nonetheless. And you're like, well, shoot, I'm sure other people are doing stuff like this. Like, let's create a Facebook group. Let's just create a little community. But it, it started as a fun thing, right, for you. So right. I'm curious on the, on the coaching side and the advising side, was it kind of the same thing where it was, you naturally found yourself falling into, you know, finding success with, uh, there was a need there that was untapped um, or was it more of a conscious decision or maybe a combination thereof? It really was a, uh, I was given an opportunity, you know, there was a company in, in the Midwest that said, Hey, you know, we're trying to grow. We see what you're doing with your company. Do you mind coming out and taking a look at what we've got going on at the time? I'm like, well, yeah, just pay for my flight, my hotel. And I got you, you know, just to see what was going to happen. I, you know, in no way, shape or form that I ever do. I ever feel like I'm, you know, a Kenny Chapman or Chris crew, or any of those guys in the industry. I'm not, I'm more of the guy that says like, Hey, here's kind of how we did it. Here's some things that I see in your business that we can change. How do we do it? I'm not the guy that's out there. I'm not trying to sell you a coaching process or a package. I find the, the most value for me is when I get in there and I see what these guys are doing and then I can actually change some things. And that is actually, it's extremely fun. I wish I could do more coaching. Um, it's just not my, it's more of a passion for me than it is a job. And I don't ever want to lose it as a passion. So I'd like to keep it as, as just that. I don't want to ever say, Hey, here's, give me 20 grand. I'll come out and see it. No, it's, Hey, you know, if I have some time, let me come out and show you how it's done and, and, and let me help you, you know? Of course, I got to make a little money because I, you know, I'm taking time away from my business, but I'm not, you know, I'm not out there charging you for some package. I just want to see where I can do it to help you and, and watch you grow. And that's, that's the most exciting thing. When you see a guy that goes from like one or two trucks to like five trucks and you see that their bottom line is actually that much bigger. And it's like, dude, like high five, heck yeah. You know, just yeah. keep killing it, you know? And I, I just, I, it's such a passion for that. You know, I, I'm so, I, as you see, I kind of geek out. We start talking about it. like, yeah, all right, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, man. Cause it, it feels good, right? Like we can forget a lot of times in business, like, yeah, business is about growth, right? It is about, you know, creating freedom and wealth and all of that stuff for our, for us, for our families and for our, our team's family. Um, but it's that passion piece behind it. Like that's, you know, that's, that's what gets you up in the morning when yeah. it's cold and rainy and you've done it, you know, seven days a week for the last two months, like, it's that passion piece around the, the serving others that, mm -hmm. that helps get you out of bed on those days. Yeah. Well, unfortunately for me, I live in Florida, so it's cold and rainy doesn't really happen, but maybe three days a year. So <laughs> yeah, well, rain, then, rain, you know, yes. <laughs> just the opposite that, you know, that when the, when you got like 12 days in a row that have all been a hundred and it's, yep. you know, a hundred percent humidity <laughs> and you're just like, you're just dying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like right now, I think it feels like it's 112 outside. So yeah, it's AC or nothing today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> think of it now, August. Awesome, yeah, it's, it's hot. It is hot. So um, let's talk a little bit about this. We talked about a little bit uh, kind of before we started the uh, this interview uh, about personal brand, because this is something that you're starting to work on. And it, frankly, I think you've been doing it knowingly or unknowingly, you've been doing it for a long time. And so you've been yeah. doing a really good job of building that personal brand. Um, but also from a standpoint of if I own a plumbing company or an HVAC company or whatever, should I also be working on a personal brand or not? Cause we, I mean, we, I get that question a lot and I'm sure you get it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, I did, you, you hit the nail on the head. I didn't realize that I actually had any kind of a personal brand. I didn't even know what a personal brand was um, until I was actually, I was on a connecting flight going to Milwaukee for the NPS, uh, which is Milwaukee Tools, big product symposium they do every year. I was on a connecting flight in Charlotte, North Carolina from Tampa to then to Milwaukee. And a guy in the middle of the airport was like, yo, 
you're the hack master. And uh, they always could, they call me the hack master. And I was like, you're yeah. Saying? So he came over, he asked me, yeah, he asked me to take a picture with him. I was like, uh, dude, I'm nobody. Like I'm a guy that sits on Facebook and plays and has fun. And he's like, no, dude, you changed my career. You know, you've impacted me, you know, some of the stuff you say. And I'm just like, wow. So then that really kind of hit me. That was a couple of years ago. And I'm like, you know, I, th I think it is time to really start trying to build a brand. And, um, you know, circa now, I'm, I'm still in the middle of a process of trying to build one. I don't want to, I'm more or less, like I said, I'm super humble. I don't want to be like Mike Rowe because I don't think I could ever be that awesome. Um, but I really just want to leave my legacy in this industry and say, you know, I hope that I was able to impact people and just really kind of help others do better things. So, and, and as far as a personal brand goes, I think as a business owner, you know, you're putting yourself out there, you're doing things in your community, that's building your personal brand. Yeah, your company's attached to it, but you're only as good as the leader of your business. So if you're in there and, and, and you know, you're causing a scene or you're causing a ruckus, you're not doing anything good for your business. The most impactful thing I've ever seen is, uh, and one thing, this is something we do all the time, we stopped on the side of the road when a lady had her uh, flat tire, stopped on the side of the road, changed her tire real quick. We were in our work truck. She posted it on Facebook. It blew up. We had, I think we had like 50,000 comments on this post just for changing this lady's tire. Let me tell you, we didn't have to do any kind of marketing for about six months because it was just so, we got so many calls from, hey, you were the guys that changed the lady's tire on the side of the road. So and it wasn't any kind of, there was no intent behind it. It was just like, hey, this lady's struggling. Somebody took a picture of seeing us change this lady's tire and it just blew up. So, you know, doing things like that and just really being a role model in your community is really, really what will build your personal brand. And you just really got to just take yourself to that next level. And, and just when you're outside, you know, like me personally, I'm always wearing a company shirt. You know, like I'm a pipe rehab consultant for specialized pipe technologies, SPT, all the time. Um you know, and that's one thing that actually kind of got me into the role I'm in now with SBT. And I'd love to talk about that a little bit. You know, I'm a pipe rehab consultant for SBT. I still own my plumbing company. I was getting bored with the plumbing industry um, because I've been in this so long. I was kind of not really bored. I was getting more burnout. So um, I was selling a lot of jobs for these guys. They said, hey, come work for us. That was two and a half years ago. Um, now my job is instead of instead of consulting other business owners, it's consulting huge projects, uh, condos, HOAs, high rises on how to implement plumbing systems. And it's a no pressure, no deal situation. I go in as a consultant. I'm not there to sell them anything. I tell them, here's your options. Here's what you can do on the plumbing side. Here's what you can do on the rehab side. What's the best option for you? Obviously we hope that SPT gets the work from them, but you know, if they don't, that's great. We just want to make sure that we're giving them the best possible value for whatever they're getting. And, and we'll, even though we're involved, we still give them hundred percent unbiased opinion on what they're doing. And, and that's really, in, in my perspective, is talking about building that brand. You got a guy that's a licensed plumbing contractor going in, talking to a people about their plumbing system and saying, hey, here's what, the, here's what you can do on the plumbing side. Here's what you can do on the rehab side, helping them make the best decision. If it's not a fit for us, we're happily, happily going to tell them this is, hey, let's go over here and let's do this for you. So just really being with the greatest intentions, uh, you know, that's what really makes people build a personal brand. In my opinion, you know, you're constantly giving, 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 and then eventually you get the reciprocity, you know? And, and I think, I think Steven, you're, you're pretty much the man at that. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. I, I humbly accept your, uh, that, that thank you. Um, and you know, what comes to mind is, so one of our core values at wit is do what's right. And basically everything you just said, is, is just simply following that core value for us, right? Like stopping on the side of the road, helping that, uh, that woman change a tire. Um, even the way you're going in with the SPT stuff of just, Hey, here's what your options are. Here's, you know, do you have any questions? I can point you in these different directions based on what you need, but I'm going to give you all the information to make the best decision possible. And yeah, yeah of course, look, you know, that we do that work. And of course we would, like to earn it. But if for some reason you feel like we're not the best fit, that's okay too. And, and there's so much to be said for that. It, it, it increases the level of trust with the potential buyer or potential customer and uh, decreases the, you know, the BS thermometer, right? So it, it, just, it just puts them in a state of ease where they're more likely to, um, if it's a good fit and if you've given them good information, of course, they're going to go with you. And that's just such a great way to live life. And I mean, that's, you've seen, you've probably seen at least some of our sales pitches. Like one of the first things I say is 
there will be no sales pitch here. Like I'm going to give you all this information and all the research that we've done on your company. And then you can take that and make the best decision for you. Ultimately, you know what we do. You know, we're a digital marketing agency. Like, you know, we do the thing that we're offering, but if we're not the best fit for some reason, great. We'll help you find somebody else and we'll help make sure that that's a successful relationship. Yep. I live by the saying, give graciously and expect nothing in return because you, you know, that's usually when it comes back to you the most, you yeah. know, it's when, when you, when you expect to get something out of things, it, you know, gives you a little bit of a false, a false judgment or a false perspective on that situation. So I, I really, I really truly believe that, you know, Hey, go in there with, with the most honest intentions, Here's your options. Tell me, hey, am I a fit or not? It's up to you, you know. And it's it's been it's been cool to do that. Like we do CEUs, uh, we do all these different things that you know are basically you know for like CAMS, community association managers in Florida. You have to have CEUs to, to keep your license active. We do classes on what to look for in your in your piping systems, you know, that you typically wouldn't know to know to look for. Now we talk about different materials. Like I literally have a sample bag full of galvanized copper cpvc pvc black iron every pipe system you have so you can say hey here's a piece of this if you see this in your building this is what this is called and we do surveys afterwards and people are like wow that is like the most informative thing and what's great about it is again we're doing it for nothing we get a couple of people to come up and say hey can you come out and look at our piping systems yeah we're here just to give you the ceu but absolutely one of my reps out there will get you taken care of so you definitely get it back tenfold we've gotten quite a few big jobs off of doing stuff like that and it's not because we're looking for those jobs. It's because we're just out there saying, hey, here's what to look for. A lot of people don't understand this industry. There's a lot of education information out there that people don't understand. That's our job. We're the experts in our industries. Let's share that information to make sure these people are making the right decisions for what they're doing. Yeah, that's awesome, man. So kind of tying all this back into like the personal brand and the stuff that you're growing. What are So if, if you got a couple guys listening, guys or gals that run a shop, um, that are thinking like, okay, well, you know, I don't have anything to do a personal brand about, but we're kind of, I think all of us are kind of saying, yeah, you sh- look, you're either build, you're building a personal brand consciously or you're doing it unconsciously, right? right? Like if you're, if you're a business owner and you have your business uh, listed on your Facebook page, you're building a personal brand about whatever it is you're posting on Facebook. You might not be doing it knowingly or consciously. So if somebody's saying, okay, well, I, I want to start building a personal brand. What, what advice do you have based on your experience so far that they could start doing to, to start pushing that out there? So, I mean, basically what I do is, is, you know, I obviously start groups of stuff that you're an expert in, you know, and what you really want to, like, if you're, if, if you're in a personal brand, you, you have different people. They have Russell Brunson, you know, that does his thing. You know, you have, you have all these different people. Look at Gary Vee. You know, the guy's an, an utter genius when it comes to marketing on the high end, you know, Nike, all those guys. Like, he does big, big marketing employees for those dudes. That's what he does, you know. And the reason why he's doing the, the personal brand that he is, he's not talking about, hey, this is how you water your lawn. He's talking about, hey, this is how you grow your business. This is how you do this. Whatever you're an expert in, that's the avenue of where you want to go. If that's what you have the passion in, that's where you want to go with the personal brand. You know, if you, if you like guns, start a darn gun thing that, you know, if you're, if you're really, really proficient in that, start talking about it, start talking to other people that are like-minded and, and talk about, that want to talk about the same things and, you know, post on your, if you, here's the thing, this is something that drives me crazy as a, as a plumbing industry professional. These guys all have their own personal Facebooks, but they're like so afraid of a customer request them as a friend that they don't want to take them on and like oh you know forget it i just want to blow up on facebook and talk crap and it's like you know that's great and all but if this person wants to be your friend on a personal level that's saying something about your company that's saying that they obviously had enough you made enough of an impact on them that they want to see kind of who you are as a person and you can get more and more people in there so use your facebook exactly what it's what it's designed for which was not to show everybody what your social stuff was it was to build a brand you know instagram is the same way Use those platforms to build and talk to people and, and post about things that are in your industry. Um, if you want to do it personally, that's fine. But as a business owner, I think the most important thing is just to have the access and the availability to want to do that type of thing. You know, you're, if you're a plumber, post about plumbing stuff. Uh, if you see on my personal Facebook, I mean, I'm not the greatest at this, but I always usually post like, so I'm hosting this TV show called No Dig TV, which is uh, a, just, as, through nodig.com. I post it on my personal Facebook. Uh, I do the Titans of Trench List, which is another uh, kind of like what we're doing here. 
same scenario. I post that on my personal Facebook. I, yeah, I post pictures of my kids and I'm out on the boat or whatever, but that's because I'm trying to get people, hey, I have a life outside of plumbing too. Um, but anything that's really impactful, you know, I always try to post that and, and do that because at the end of the day, to build a personal brand, people have to see who you are as a person. You know, it's a personal brand. So you want to make sure that you're posting things that are, that are relevant to what you're trying to accomplish. I think I, I don't have a lot of friends. I think I have like 1,900 people and I probably know 500 of them personally. <laughs> the rest are just people that follow me or that I'm friends with because I talk a lot about the industry. So um, if you don't want to use your personal Facebook for that, then start a group. That's the other thing I would say. Um, and then just keep your personal Facebook personal. Um, but yeah, it's it, building a brand is to me, now that I understand what it is, is probably one of the more important things for me now because it's like, I want to leave, it goes back to what you're just talking about. My mentor, Dave Fehrenbach, always said, um, you know, at the end of the day, you've got to give back to an industry that's been so gracious to you. So anything I can do to help other people grow, that's how I'm giving back to this industry. You know, we were, I was blessed. Uh, a lot of the guys I've, I work with were blessed because we had a mentor like Dave. And I hate to say it, there's really not a lot of those guys out there anymore. Now it's like we talked about a little bit earlier, the coaching thing nothing drives me more crazy than somebody talking about being a coach when they've never owned a business or they've never led a team, you know, they just go in and say, Hey, I did this for 10 minutes. Oh, I can be a coach on that, you yeah. know, or, or little league is the best thing in the world for me. I, I coach my son's little league baseball team He's in T-ball. I played softball my whole life, you know, so I know softball when it comes to baseball, I'm not going to coach my kid's team because I'm going to let the guys that play baseball coach my kid's team. So I think that word coach is thrown around a little too much uh, more than it probably should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think, I think a lot of the people, not a lot, I'm, I'm not going to use uh, quantities, but there's people that are doing it right. And those are the people that care about the results that they're getting and actually impacting their, their coaching clients. And then there's the other people that are doing it because they see money. And mm -hmm. that's, those are the ones that uh, I'm with you, man. Those drive me fucking crazy. I can't stand them. Right. Because they're putting their own needs before the needs of everybody else. And they're not really actually there to serve uh, their, their client. They're there to serve themselves. And mm -hmm. that drives me insane. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, we don't I have to go you, too I, far down that route. Everybody listening, they get it. Everybody knows. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. I, I, I pissed off one of the biggest coaches in the plumbing industry because he basically said that I was giving away too much information for free. And I said, you know what, if me giving away a little bit of this information makes somebody else money and makes them realize that, Hey, I might need a coach or I might need to take myself to the next level. I'm, I'm in it. I'm not giving you a whole pro. I mean, I'm not walking into your office and saying, here's our process. You do it this way. I'm saying, Hey man, this is something I learned 10 years ago or five years ago and this changed my business. You know, like the options thing, just real quick little tip on that. Like the giving people options that changed our business model tenfold. Now, you know, we learned about options probably 14, 15 years ago was when the Mayo price book really was blowing up and they were talking about good, better, best options. You know, I tell everybody about that. It's amazing how many plumbing companies out there still walk in to say, all right, Mrs. Jones, you need a new water heater. Here you go. This is your price. Hey, Mrs. Jones, how many daughters do you have? How many people does live in this house? You know, this 15 gallon water heater is not going to work for you. I'd recommend you go with this tankless option or a 75 gallon water. Let's, let's get you something a little bit better, but here's your options. You can go with this water. You can go with this one or we can put an endless water heater in here right here for you. You tell me what you want to do, Mrs. Jones. Our sales went up tenfold just from doing that silly thing. And it's ironic. There's still a lot of companies out there that don't do that. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. you know, how do you know what the customer wants? And actually kind of a funny story. I had a guy a couple of years ago on the, on the plumbing ash group that was arguing because a customer, he kept going to a customer's house and clearing out a drain stoppage. Another company came in or, and actually dug the pipe up, fixed the problem. And the guy was mad because he's like, well, I tried to save you money, Mrs. Jones, because, you know, all I was doing was snaking. And she was like, I don't want to call you out here every year. I just want to get it fixed. I have to pay this one time, a couple thousand bucks or whatever, and I'm fixed instead of having to pay you however many dollars every time you come out. Like you didn't give her the option. So yeah. you're upset with the customer because she wanted a different option than what you were giving her. You know, I, it still to this day blows my mind. And we, a lot of us tried to get through to that guy. And just, it was just like, all right, man, you win. Hopefully it was <laughs> a good learning you, experience for him. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know if he's still, he hasn't changed at all. I don't think, but Hey, you know, you know what they say, you know, there's 10% of people that are never going to hear anything you say. So. Yeah.
it's so interesting you know. that the value pricing model applies, you know, to every industry really. Like I learned about this um, a few years ago when it came to you know, pricing out marketing services, you know, in the past, a lot of people did it by the hour. And what I realized is people don't care, you know, how you get it done or how long it takes you to get it done. They care about the value that they're getting in terms of the solution, getting their problem solved. Um, so I think it's actually really valuable. I never even thought it in the plumbing, you know, cause plumbing does, it has this kind of historical traditional like old school sense to it. So when I think of, okay, a new pricing model, I definitely don't think of it in terms of how, how, how would you apply that to the plumbing industry, but it's, it makes so much sense, Brian, now that you explain it. Like, yeah, of course, at the end of the day, everybody just cares about getting their problems solved in the most, you know, in, in the best way possible, right? Um, so I, I think that's actually a really cool tidbit just from an advisory point of view, like, hey, like even as simple, something as simple as pricing, you can, you can really extract and, and, and kind of revamp. So it's a better experience, not only for the customer, but also for your business and earn you more revenue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, again, it just goes back to, you know, they obviously put yourself in the shoes of the, of the customer. And it's like, you know, a lot of guys are like, well, I'm the plumber, so I know better than I would for the customer. Yeah, but you don't know if that plumber or that customer has five daughters. And I, don't, I have a daughter, she's 13. Let me tell you, those are 30 minute showers. You know, it's like, I had to go tankless, you know, because I wasn't getting in the shower, if not, you know, so like it was just that perspective is just like, you know, oh, I'm the plumber, I'm the professional. Yeah, you are the professional, but as a professional, your job is to educate and inform that customer to make the best decision for their needs, not your needs, their needs. And I think that's a big mis misperception, especially in our industry. I know a lot of guys are doing that now, but there's a lot that aren't. And that's, it just, it still blows my mind that, you know, it's 2020. There's so much great information out there. Um, social media is just absolutely one of the best tools ever, you know you get so much great information and there's things that you're not thinking of, you know, like watching, watching your videos all the time about marketing. I didn't, I thought I knew marketing. And then when, when Steve and I first hooked up, it was like, Oh, Oh, I, I didn't even know that. And it was like, Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. So it's, it's, it just goes back to that perspective. Like there's so much out there to learn. If you're not the expert, find somebody who is and run with it, you know, get 27 different opinions. But, you know, it, it, at the end of the day, you know, we're all in it for the same reason. We're here to take care of people and we're here to take care of our, our families, you know, and, and that's it. I love it. Dude, I love that, man. I think that's, uh, I think that's a huge takeaway from this, just this episode is just remembering, like, where do we put our focus, right? Put our focus on helping and serving others, be intelligent about the business side and pay attention to it. But that putting the focus where it, should be first is, is what makes us all way more fulfilled. It ends up making us way more money and it just gives mm -hmm. us a, a way better quality of life. And, and it's super fun to help others. Like Amen. that's what it's about. So awesome, man. Well, Brian, dude, I really appreciate the time today. This has been fantastic. Um, where can people find out more about you or if they want to, or if they want to connect or send them wherever you want. <laughs> uh, Facebook, you can give me, um, my name, Brian Hammonds, or you can, if you're in the plumbing industry, you have to be in the industry. Uh, you can go to plumbing hacks and plumbing pro discussions or, um, uh, on Instagram at plumbing underscore hacks. Um, those are, those are our groups. Instagram is not that great. I'm still trying to figure that one out. It's a, it's a whole different animal there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding, man. Okay. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, thanks everybody so much for hanging out with Davis and I today, as we interviewed Brian Hammonds. And went through a lot of cool stuff about, you know, making sure that we're paying attention to giving to those in our community, those around us, you know, following like our core value of do what's right. And then also the importance of building a personal brand. So if you're not doing it, I would highly recommend, uh, well, if you think you're not doing it, it just means that you're doing it unconsciously right now. So choose to consciously go down the path of starting to build a personal brand and be a little bit more aware of it. And don't be afraid of it, right? Like just start somewhere, start posting something about your company or your techs or your job or happy customers or whatever. Just start doing something because uh, you're either building a personal brand consciously or you're doing it unconsciously. And uh, you might as well be doing it in the direction that you want to showcase yourself and your, and your company the way you want. So hope you got a ton of information out of this today. I know you did. And until next time, uh, I don't know. I don't really have a, a, a little sign off phrase. So until next time, just keep being a badass. <laughs> <laughs>